So then when I have a look over here, right, can I break it apart like I did before? We broke it apart with the real component. Can I do it with this guy? Can I write this? What do you guys think? Do you reckon it's doable? Or am I breaking rules? Hmm. Now this is what I mean by, right? You have to pause for a moment and really think. I could really quickly just tell you an answer. I could say, yes you can, no you can't, right? But what's more important, like if all I give you is a rule, then if someone asks you later on, like you leave here and you're like, oh, what can you do with this? You'll go from this line to the next line. And if someone say, but why did you do that? Pretty much the best answer you can give is, because Mr. Wu told me I could, right? Because there was some accepted authority that gave me that. But you don't need an authority like me. You can work out yourself. Justin, I see you kind of thinking, what's your instinct? Yes, we can or no, we can't? The modulus of I is one. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So that's, if, that is, if this is true, then I will use that fact. But right now, I'm still a step behind that. I, don't, I haven't established that this is true yet. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Cindy, you had an answer already. Before I started on the board, you got to like a final line. Based on your final line, do you think this is an okay operation to do? Is it consistent with yours? Yeah. Yeah? Thank you. Do you reckon this is okay? Hmm. What do you reckon, Sohan? Huh? Should, should be do. I mean, I did it with real numbers, right? Except, <laughs> while I, I totally agree with that as a general problem solving strategy, you can see that strategy in and of itself by itself it doesn't cut it, right? It's like, if I can do it with real numbers, that does not mean I can do it with complex numbers, okay? So, let me make you feel better. Yes, we can do it. <laughs> so therefore, um, what Justin said is correct. Um, the, where did I put it? There it is. The modulus of I, let's think about what that means, right? Because um, this is where some of your definitions for the absolute value, they sort of break down when you go into a complex world, right? But you can't think of it as the positive version of, because I is neither positive nor negative. It's not on the real number line, right? So there's I, but of course the modulus of I is just how far is that from the origin, which of course is one unit, right? Now, just a little minor thing here. When you go from this to the next line, I'm going to ask you if you ever see something like this, to write, what this actually equals. Don't just make it disappear. It actually is something. It just so happens that that something is one. Okay? It's a very parallel problem to this. If you um, remember this guy, um, I should have made that an x actually. Sine x on x. You remember this limit? Um, this is a really common limit that you have to deal with back in two unit extension one. You want to say that that's one. If there's a, a two here, you want to say that's two times one. So you sh un show your understanding of that limit being something. It doesn't just disappear. Okay. Once you get to this, so you can see the difference, right, between my answer and your answer. This is the absolute value of x y. It's greater than four. Okay. Now, if I gave you, I'm going to come over here. I have just enough space. If I gave you something like this. Right? This guy is important to me because it's going to form part of the boundary. Right? This is an inequality, but the equation forms like the boundary lines that confine that inequality. Right? Now this guy is quite good to draw because we're really familiar with this shape. This of course is the old familiar hyperbola. Right? Cool. Uh, but I have an absolute value sign here. So that's not the only part of the boundary. What's the other part? When you have the absolute value of A, right? What that means is, sometimes it's just a. Sometimes the absolute value of xy is just xy. But sometimes it's not. What else can it be equal to? Yeah, negative a. Depending on what. When is it just equal to a? A is positive, thank you very much. And what about this one? If a is, yeah. And somewhere in there you include the zero. It doesn't really matter, as you know. Okay. Now, for that reason, <clears throat> How do I interpret when is this thing equal to, when is the absolute value of xy, when is it equal to minus xy and not just xy? On what condition? Look, look at how I did it, right? It's if this thing inside is negative. If xy is negative. Now think about this, right? Where would x times y give me a negative? Hmm. Um, let's have a look over in this area here. This quadrant, right? 
x and y are both positive, yeah? So x times y will give me a positive. So this is not that. This doesn't satisfy that, right? What about over here? Over in this region here, uh, x is negative, but y is positive. So the sine of xy, therefore, will be negative. So tick, I want this area. Can you tell me now, biologically working it out, where's the other area? Yeah, fourth quadrant, very good. Down here, OK? So in here, I want this graph, not this one. And it's the same deal, but opposite. I want this graph in these quadrants. Are you OK with that? All right, so now you can actually draw your set of axes. I will get some space for myself. Have you guys already drawn your set of axes there? Go ahead and draw it. <clears throat> and this is what happens, we've noticed this before, when you have absolute values, right? You kind of get um, copies and reflections and that kind of thing. So I've got, this is what x, y looks like, that part there. And it's OK in those two quadrants, number one and number three. And then in the second and fourth quadrants, I've got minus x, y, which looks like that. Is that OK? I haven't worried too much about scale, because we can put a point on there and label some numbers in a second. But that's um, very messy, so I'm going to put it onto this clean one over here. Now, because our components of our, our branches of our graph, they just stretch off to infinity, this really divides up the entire plane. This is the imaginary axis, of course, and this is the real one. It divides it into, well, a whole lot of different zones, right? So you have to test all of your cases very carefully. I'm going to give you a moment just to try and work out, where do you think I need to shade? Do you think I need to go here, 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 or here? Are they separate to here, 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 and here? Have a moment, test some points, and see if you think it connects or it doesn't, and whether you can sense a pattern there.